When tanks rolled down Kim Il-sung Square in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea, on the 10th of October, the image given to the rest of the world was one of business as usual in the isolated country. However, away from the bombast and sabre rattling, a change is underway at the very heart of the North Korean state, once driven by a tightly controlled communist command economy, largely synonymous with rationing and material deprivation. Though not officially acknowledged, a grey economy has evolved considerably over the past two decades, a development that's been accelerated under leader Kim Jong-un. The Pothongang department store, opened by the late Kim Jong-il in December 2010, is an illustration of the deeper changes taking place. The nondescript shop, situated down a back road in the capital, sells everything from flat-screen TVs to sports goods and imported wine. Significantly, the goods are priced in US dollars, Chinese yuan and North Korean won, at a black market rate of 8,400 won to the dollar. The North Korean government sets an official rate for won at 105 to the dollar, an 80th of the black market rate. Journalists are prevented from filming inside the store or interviewing any shoppers by the minders who accompany them throughout the trip. Andrei Lankov, a North Korean expert at Kukmin University in Seoul, said the government of Kim Jong-un, who became North Korea's leader after his father's death in December 2011, has essentially accepted the ubiquity of a black market rate and a widespread illicit economy. Kim Jong-un policy is remarkably friendly towards the private businesses because his father was uncertain. He oscillated from toleration of the private economy to a occasional support of the private economy and then back to attempts to eradicate private economy. It was his father's policy, but not his. Kim Jong-un's policy is different. Uh, it's a quite tacit approval and encouragement and support of the private economic activities. While the countryside has failed to enjoy the same increase in living standards as the capital, in many ways it's driven the changes seen in Pyongyang. Agricultural mismanagement, floods and the collapse of the Soviet Union led to famine in the mid-1990s. Faced with the choice of cracking down on something they were ideologically opposed to, or letting their people starve, the state for the most part left the informal markets alone. When the famine ended, many of the black markets remained. While trade can account to a certain extent for the rise in disposable incomes, there has yet to be an adequate explanation for the pace at which the changes have taken place. Where the money came from, I think that baffles economists. Nobody really seems to know. I mean, North Korea is under a lot of sanctions. Um, their economic record is not particularly amazing. So how has this managed to fund the creation of a new class of people who have money to spend on some fairly frivolous things? This is a bit of a mystery, to be honest. Nobody has explained it adequately yet. At a speech following a military parade marking the 70th anniversary of the ruling Workers' Party, Kim Jong-un promised to introduce people-first politics. It remains unclear, however, how committed he and his Workers' Party, not to mention the powerful military, are to market-based reforms. However, North Korean experts say it's only a matter of time before the Kim regime formally adopts a market-based economy, as China did 35 years ago under Deng Xiaoping.